Bueno, y como, eh... As you said, the catering sector is undergoing a major change. Coming to this city, which is at the heart of gastronomy, and it's a great place to talk about catering 4.0, there's a challenge ahead of us, but it's also, I feel, an opportunity, an opportunity to open a window to new habits, and I think this is actually a historic change that's coming about. I think we're at a vital moment in history. And not just a matter of change. It's not just restaurants, but the, our eating habits. And it's an area where restaurants and technology are going to come together and have to work together. As uh, was said earlier, I'm going to talk about catering 4.0 and this new era for restaurants. And why do I think this is a historic uh, change, a historic time of historical change? Because we're beginning to get figures that prove that. And we're seeing there's a major change in the way we eat. And this mm, dates basically from technological changes and uh, the existence of restaurants because increasingly the population has decided to spend more in restaurants than supermarkets. This is a curve from the U US department that for the first time in history compared these two expenditures in March 2015 and for the first time in 2015 the amount of money spent by Americans on uh, restaurants was greater than that spent at grocery stores. And in Europe, there are now cities where this ten trend is repeating. And it's something that's uh, going to happen increasingly. The second thing is a, a larger and increasingly larger percentage of the population prefer to consume in restaurants or spend more time in restaurants than at home. We're talking here about a time factor now. So restaurants aren't uh, just a place for uh, some pleasure, a pleasurable time, but actually they're a place where we get our necessary calories from, our necessary food from. Increasingly, a larger percentage of people have as their main supplier of a food a restaurant. And a third data that's uh, proving that this change is coming about is that we consume increasingly restaurant products outside of restaurants than in the restaurant themselves. That rate of increase is a two-digit rate of increase. It's the greatest growth that exists in any sector in the world. And it's a change in habits. And where we're seeing an enormous change and where we're actually beginning to stop cooking. This is a an era of great information about uh, cooking. There's many cooking uh, programs, but actually this is now being replaced uh, because of time restraints and because of economic problems, where we're now ordering takeaways from home. So lots of this restaurant food is being eaten at home. And what's more, the conversation surrounding restaurants has digitalized. That's another thing. You, the leading area of conversation in the digital world in the last year was restaurants. So it's through this kind of digital conversation and recommendation that means that there's this increasing uh, content, uh, food content in the digital world. And this is something that we need to understand. And what we need to understand is that eating is now a digital product. It's a product that, that has a digital traceability where the customer connects uh, to the food in many cases thanks to technology. And, and it's now a digital product. What does that digital product mean? That means that, that there are going to be companies that to date weren't very relevant in the sector such as uh, uh, technology companies, automotion uh, companies that have realized that this is a product that's interesting for their core business. And if we look now at our relationship historically with food, it's always been direct, either because we went out and bought the raw ingredients, we cooked them, or because we directly spoke to our restaurants. But 
recently an intermediary has come between us and the food, the end product, which is technology. This technology adds value. It connects us to food very quickly in just a click. We can get any kind of food that we want. It allows us to eat quickly. It gives us all different kinds of options that are personalized depending upon my lifestyle or my mm, taste. And on many occasions, it's far more cheap than to cook it ourselves. And it also changes the relationship that we have with our uh, customer. So we start uh, connecting to our food whilst on the move. And this completely changes the re our relationship with food and our eating habits because restaurants for the first time in history uh, now actually are in the food pyramid. For uh, the first time in history, a larger part of the uh, population has as their main supplier of food as restaurants. Of course, traditional restaurants as well, but we need to think about other kinds of restaurants, restaurants that are being created by technology. Now, we can't necessarily understand restaurants as a physical space. They're not something that has a number of chairs or tables or square meters. Now, restaurants sell uh, food to neighborhoods, to people, to other countries even. So restaurants don't just offer this experience, this experience of pleasure. There are, are places for food. And that is very, very important. And as I said earlier, there's a digital side to this conversation and it's uh, being transferred to this environment. There's less of a face-to-face -face, uh, relationship with restaurants and more of a digital relationship with restaurants. So I'm going to be talking about catering 4.0, but behind all of that, we need to remember that we're talking about nutrition, new uh, feeding habits and health and, of course, public welfare. And this relationship, this connection with uh, technology and food is going to be vital if we remember that. So this is a historical opportunity that we have before us. The opportunity of uh, feeding a population that has decided, as I said earlier, that one of the main means of uh, getting uh, food is going to be this new idea of restaurants. And it wants technology to connect them when they want, where they want to these new restaurants. What's more, this technology, we saw this yesterday, is learning. It's a learning technology. So we've now got smart, intelligent uh, technologies that are able to converse with us, that are able to learn, decide, and on many occasions are going to predict my uh, food habits. To understand this change, we need to just uh, look at what's happened over the last 15 years. I'm just gonna give you maybe four or five tips that we need to comprehend to understand where this idea of smart restaurants or restaurants 4.0 are heading. Between 20 and 2020, we call this era as the digital restaurant era or digital restaurants 2.0. And there are five levers that we've learned from in this period. Firstly, is our relationship with our customers has, digital, has become digitalized. This is something that we actually published in a newspaper uh, recently, where you can see all the different kinds of uh, interrelations that a customer can have with a restaurant. They can get inspired in Pinterest, they can search via Google, they can consult Facebook, they can reserve on a special booking app. This didn't exist five years ago. Now the relationship with our customers has been fully digitalized. This is another article that I wrote a few uh, months ago called The Fidgetal Restaurant. That is because the experience with a restaurant is no longer physical. It's on many occasions digital because on many occasions what the customer is doing is combining the physical and digital planes. And the restaurant needs to find a response to this new way of a getting in touch with its customers. This is a screenshot from Instagram, another one from Google My Business, where people don't just show share photos. Instagram has become a fundamental platform for a customer, for gaining more customers. You can share, you can book even a restaurant. And Google is completely obsessed with restaurants and customers. 
there's no week or month in which a new which which passes in which a new service isn't offered either takeaway services internet booking etc etc so uh, the technology companies know that food is going to have to go through their hands they've realized that so that's what we call a digital portal or digital port a digital door because the technology companies have realized that restaurant doors are no longer made of glass or wood but are made out of digital things over 60 percent of people have told us that they access restaurants thanks to a video a photo on instagram uh, a recommendation on TripAdvisor. so new opportunities are being given to us to open these digital doors and how do you do that through the internet second thing that we've actually learned over the last 15-20 years is that experiences can be shared. Sharing experience forms a part of the customer's experience. This is a photo that you still see in restaurants, but, but actually it's more like this photo. That's a more normal one. And this has an important connotation, this photo, because for the first time we are sharing something which until only recently, just a blink away, was something that we did personally with our own presence but now we're experiencing things via Twittify or WhatsApp so we're including digital notions into something that was unheard of before uh, this is a cartoon which I think explains things perfectly which says should I put my mobile next to my knife or next to my fork that's sit people sitting around a restaurant table and if you go at a restaurant table nowadays and there's no mobile on the on the table it's weird and people are always trying to make photos of uh, what they're eating. This is part of the customer experience and customers have decided that they want to share their experience. It's shareable, so we need to remember that. Restaurants that even encourage that, they'll uh, give you a kit for that. I've just come from Colombia. In Colombia, there was a restaurant with a, a corner where you could just uh, with the correct lighting, take your photo, then upload it and eat it afterwards. Why is that happening? Because there's a new communication language and the new communication language is images. Images are changing the relationship that we have with restaurants. In fact, some restaurants, and some of them are very, very, very quick, are designing courses so that the photo looks fantastic here we've got one that you can photograph in movement nowadays it's more important to photograph what you're eating than actually eat it and these kind of restaurants are beginning to exist and we need to understand that this is part of our experience and also the brands can appear in part of the uh, food in this case you can see it's on the photo and this brings us on to the second thing that's important to understand which is digital tips what are digital tips a digital tip is when a customer shares a photo or makes a recommendation of a restaurant that's a digital tip because that's a normal new way of communicating because communicating uh, isn't done by the restaurant they, these days it's done by a customer they share digital tips in online settings and the third lever that we've learned is that relations are unlimited they're limitless Ever since uh, the customer arrived through our restaurant doors, we've been, for the last 80 years, uh, managing the customer. But what happens with uh, digitalization? Well, the first thing that, that the customer sees is uh, digitally represented. And once they leave the restaurant, that doesn't end. That experience doesn't end. There's, okay, the inspiration stage, which is 99% digitalized. It's when the customer is seeking information about the restaurants and not just uh, uh, seeks information, but they also book it. They book it over the internet. And then you've got the R after the gastronomical experience, the reputation. Reputation, which means that they are sharing that information either critically or positively. So this is what I call digital, partly physical, partly digital. And this is all part of customers' new experience where you get uh, the digital plane and the presential plane, physical plane. This is an article that we published uh, recently that 
There was a 34% increase in digital bookings online in Spain in Easter this year. Look at these figures. In 2011 in Spain, there were 250,000 opinions about restaurants in 2011. We estimate that by that for 2018, when the figures are published, there'll be 10 million uh, comments on restaurants in opinion portals. This is an information that just goes to show that the conversation around restaurants has digitalized completely. Why? Because today, customers are customers before they even go into the restaurant, and they're still customers when they leave that restaurant. This experience is longer and it's digitalized. The fourth thing I'd like to mention is contextual change. To date, restaurants, if we had to define a restaurant in a certain way, we'd say that they're context creators. Contexts uh, have been given to uh, uh, a gastronomic experience. But smartphones change the way we relate to each other, the fact that we can relate in movement with a restaurant, and that changes completely the context. Online orders in Spain are growing and uh, will double in five years. What does that mean? What that means it's not the is that it's not the restaurant that decides the context that says come and uh, have dinner to my limited space. It's the customer, and thanks to technology, the uh, customer can decide where and what and when they want to. Uh, each. You can actually get this kind of thing, Domino's, anywhere, and you can order things via Google, uh, via, via Alexa, tweets, cabs, whatever, smart TV. It's just context that changes. Three years ago, I went to a congress called Host at the Basque Culinary Centre, where the maitre, maitre d's of the major restaurants in the world came together. A lot was spoken about tablecloths and all sorts of things. And then I said, OK, well, but what happens when the restaurant room, the dining room, is my office? Because I can choose the context. I can choose where I want to eat. And the possibility of relating to food through technology via restaurants has actually changed the physical context of restaurants. This is a restaurant... Uh, in Madrid, healthy food, where the Instagram photo is actually a shop. It's an e-commerce shop. The customer actually doesn't share the photo. They directly buy the food from the photo. Um, one trend which is growing increasingly in uh, youngsters is not booking a table, but making an, an order online. Why? Because what we're clear on is that in this new area, customers go to restaurants, but now they also have restaurants coming to customers. And finally, the, what we've learnt over the last uh, few years is digital prestige. Basically, that was uh, to state to date based on the practitioners, i.e. the professionals that work in restaurants. Earlier, I spoke about how restaurants are the ones that have a greatest digital presence. And of course, the online reputation, criticisms, uh, um, recommendations is something that the sector is very concerned about, especially when we hear about uh, these kind of events. This is a piece of research that we did in a restaurant in Madrid that had asked for a loan, a loan of a large amount of money. We actually researched with the bank, uh, how they'd actually given them the credit. And the bank actually confirmed to us that they'd actually looked at the recommendations the restaurant had received before deciding whether to give them a loan or not. Why? Because it's a way of ensuring whether the restaurant works or not. All this information, all this digital information surrounding restaurants is affecting more and more elements, not just in uh, attracting customers and making them loyal. We also have inverse online reputation. The restaurants are also obtaining more information about their customers to surprise them, to know about their habits, what they like, what is the wine that they like. And we're also observing that more and more the chef is using big data to get to know its uh, customer. What's uh, prestige or digital 
uh, prestige. This is achieved by making your customer your best uh, seller. Nowadays, the customer is the one generating communication with the restaurant through those uh, digital tips that uh, he or she is uh, sharing in digital environments. So we have uh, faced uh, years in which we've learned that uh, um, relationships are digitalized, that we have uh, shared experiences with digital tips. These relationships uh, have no end, and there is a change in context. The context is set by the customer, and uh, prestige is uh, provided by your customers when sharing that digital uh, tip and uh, the information about your restaurant. But there's something also fundamental to get ready for this era of restaurants 4.0. And that's that uh, we all have a device, a mobile device, and we all have a digital habit and we are processing millions of data per second about uh, the way in which we eat our habits and our digital relationship with food. And this is the foundations uh, on which uh, restaurants 4.0 or smart restaurants or connected restaurants uh, uh, are created. Why? Because we need to understand, and this is linked to what I said before, that gastronomy nowadays is a gastronomy that is... Uh, Evolving. We don't understand the restaurants as a, a physical environment only. Now, restaurants want to get into your living room. An important part of um, eating happens through these systems. Let's go over this very simple exercise. Let's go to Google Trends and uh, find a, a takeaway or food delivery food. We see that in 2013, it's uh, not a very present, but it uh, grows a lot. Never before in Spain had this uh, term been introduced into um, um, search engine before. So we're interested in delivery and in this change and of getting food in a different way or changing our more traditional habits. But when we see something like this, that big uh, companies like El Corte Inglés are already uh, providing their first uh, uh, home uh, deliveries or Mercadona has the Mercadona restaurant's uh, um, name. So they're going to sell this uh, food differently and this makes us see that there has been a change. When retail comes uh, to be part of the restaurant sector or when the restaurants uh, also um, merge somehow with the retail, then we can clearly see that there is a growing market that wants uh, to uh, get their food in a different way. Amazon, Amazon restaurants. And in the UK, it exists. In Spain, uh, they've tried, but they haven't achieved it. But uh, how long would it take for Amazon to bring you uh, your pizza home? Because some, uh, Amazon comes to my office more than some of my employees. So uh, they have the logistics already. So they have that in place. But we're also seeing exactly the opposite. This already uh, made a, a restaurant of food in supermarkets so I can get the Goico Grill hamburger at the El Corte Inglés at the supermarket shelves or you can purchase a Starbucks coffee and other things so we see these two worlds coming together the supermarket sees a value in this new habit and the restaurant uh, sees a new way of selling its uh, product with a uh, uh, people have, that have decided to eat in a different way. And I'm not saying eating uh, badly, but eating uh, well because they have the information. Many of those projects are based on a zero kilometer um, products, for example, and that is the change. When we all have the same technology, we compete for emotions and differentiation. And that's what many of these projects are based on. Now in Spain, we still don't seem to have more delivery than restaurants. 90% say they don't change uh, going to a restaurant to getting food delivered, but I change cooking for getting food delivered at home. 
So I insist this is a growing market and so you understand what I'm saying. According to the estimates we have, the um, market worldwide in 2020 would be around uh, 400,000 million dollars. And in uh, 2030, as you can see, it will be much bigger. So there is a significant change behind all this. I wrote this article about these uh, uh, waiters, uh, external waiters, because waiters are not only for um, the uh, uh, sites or the restaurants, but there is also an optimization uh, change. And we're also observing some dramatic changes regarding logistics and that it needs to be improved. Many things need to improve, there's no doubt. But these are the new kind of uh, waiters of this new era where technology uh, connects you with food in a different way. Let's think about the automotive sector. They have uh, cars for uh, food delivery. They know how long it will take. These are services that are incorporating other so just for example, with a keen car a service from Amazon, they bring the food to the trunk of your car. Or here we have a robot delivering uh, food in universities in Europe and the US. Or Uber uh, competes with Amazon in the uh, food delivery services with drones. So we're also talking about uh, um, drones. This is a patent a recent uh, patent uh, from IBM and uh, through uh, a drone, they're able to bring coffee. And when the um, student makes a gesture, they bring down the coffee to them. I would say these are quite extreme examples. But what I want you to understand through this is that this is going to continue changing. Look at this restaurant, a mobile restaurant. It can be in transit hotspots in cities and it's able to supply in these uh, hotspots and it's completely autonomous. You can have it in different places in the city and it can uh, supply these products. So the concept of a gastronomy in movement is fundamental. Why? Because as I said before, customers go to restaurants, but in this uh, 4.0 restaurants, restaurants also go to the customers. The second lever we are observing with great growth are virtual assistants and robotics. When the market has decided that an important part of uh, them being provided by uh, food are the systems, they need to robotize systems. So we go from feeding thousands of people to feeding uh, millions of people. The assistants are growing significantly. Uh, we can see here how things change when Amazon decides to sell Alexa in December. A term that had no relevance and here we see the big leap and that's because it's connected with food and other services but it's also a new uh, type of uh, or way of connecting and they say that they've sold a hundred uh, million Alexas so they can sell food through the, and this is the technology that uh, has been incorporated in uh, American life uh, more quickly, even uh, more than smartphones. Alexa and all the other uh, devices, in uh, five years, almost half of the Americans have one. And we're starting to observe those changes and how it's uh, customized. For example, now we have an Alexa for the car. And, uh, this is also done through bots uh, because this a bot, for example, recommends uh, uh, restaurants in Madrid through the robot. Here we have this in Ma. We also have another bot here that is very interesting. Here we have the Starbucks uh, barista. They launched it for some time and you could have a conversation with a bot and no doubt the bot uh, learns through its algorithm about uh, uh, your taste and it predicts uh, what you're going to drink and when. This was an article that was written after the last uh, Google conference. And I say Google creates robot 
customers for restaurants. And it provides it with a, an artificial intelligence system to customers. And the customers are able to tell their assistant that they can book a t table at a restaurant, and the assistant does this uh, booking. So this technology is not longer used only in the industry, but the customer goes much uh, faster than the restaurants themselves. More than 75% of the tasks in restaurants will be able to be automatized through robots. So we are in a sector where we have a very traditional uh, site where you have a contribution of value, but also where robots uh, will be integrated in a significant manner, mainly when there's an increase of uh, people that will get their food through these systems. We're seeing how baristas are able to um, make uh, combinations and even have recipes that come uh, to the bar, and they're able to share that information to uh, customize uh, some of the recipes. This is the perfect uh, hamburger machine. This is like an espresso machine where the whole system is digital and then you get the burger and the burger is quite well and that's the worst thing of all and I've tasted it. And this is the uh, digit which is the Ford robot and they um, and bring your or the things you order to you. The third element is the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things uh, puts a uh, um, hotel and catering at a, a very close to the customer. 64,000 million devices connected in 2025. Compared to the 10 million in 2018, we see smart TVs where we can also connect to ordering uh, food. We see uh, a watch and depending on how much you've run and they tell you the kind of uh, nutrition you need or calories and they send you offers from uh, close by restaurants we see cars connected to the internet where you can also order uh, food depending on the uh, distance or how far away you are this is the um, telepizza where you click and you get your uh, pizza because you've uh, pre-configured uh, your order. If we put that uh, also in your running shoes, you can do that. This is a Pizza Hut uh, project where it does exactly the same thing. This is the magic wand of uh, Just Eat. It has a sensor and when you move it automatically in 15 minutes, you had your uh, order at home. The Internet of Things connects us in an easy, fast way and uh, uh, very close to the food that we want to get. And I end up with big data because behind everything I've said up till now, fundamentally we have data. Data that, as I said before, uh, allow us to have a conversation, to uh, digitize, to get to know our habits and even predict those habits. This is the uh, uh, your uh, match uh, with a restaurant. You have this in Google Maps. I it did this before, and now it doesn't say if the restaurants are closer, but it tells me which ones in uh, San Sebastian are more compatible with uh, what I like. And this uh, it works better than with um, uh, uh, partners. So it says uh, which one has higher compatibility. They know what is my gastronomical DNA. We're also seeing how this uh, self-ordering kiosk with uh, facial recognition will change because depending on what you order, uh, things uh, that are offered to you are different. And we also are facing a complex situation. This is an article that uh, we wrote a few some time ago. For example, I think we're going to say goodbye to fixed uh, prices. The prices are going to change and we're going to compete in the leisure sector in the same way as they do. I think that restaurants don't uh, compete 
Uh, the restaurants you go for pleasure don't compete with restaurants. They compete with other leisure activities. There's a, a great a number of foodies that I want to spend uh, in these restaurants before going to a sports event or going to the theater. If you go to the theater, depending on where you're seated, you pay different prices. Or if you go to the movies, the price is not the same Wednesday or Sunday. Or if we go to a football match, depending on where you see the price will also be different and you pay beforehand. So the only sector or the only niche where, where this doesn't happen is restaurants. In restaurants, you pay the same every day and you pay after you've gotten the product. But with digitalization, now we have a generation that knows uh, that it's, uh, the price for renting a car will be different if it rains or not, or the price of a plane ticket will change from one second to another. So in uh, many cases, we will be able to um, make the most of this. But really, who has a power regarding data? Mainly the delivery companies or technology companies. What they're fundamentally doing is having a relationship with customers. Google, Amazon, Instagram, Deliveroo, Just Eat. They don't have restaurants, but they have the relationship with the client. We are also, also seeing these uh, dark kitchens, these uh, uh, restaurants that are exclusively created for uh, deliveries. In Madrid, we have uh, three big warehouses because they have the data. They know what they order, how much they pay, what they eat. And the business, the digital business, is uh, very important here. Let's not forget and that those that have the technology for food will have uh, the uh, technology for the world. If we think about three sectors where there has been a radical change, U Uber is the biggest uh, um, renting car company with a driver without ha owning a car. Facebook is the biggest uh, content uh, company with a uh, generating company. And Airbnb is the biggest hotel without having any uh, rooms. Uh, that they own. So probably the big leaders in the sector in the next year will probably be this kind of companies that don't have uh, their own restaurants but have the data and the relationship with a customer. It is uh, probably the big leaders in the sector won't be catering companies but technology companies that uh, sell this uh, catering product. So we see that we face a very complex uh, environment in which we need to define really well if we're going to uh, uh, base uh, everything on experience. Because I believe in a dual model. We're not going to, uh, or uh, restaurants are not going to disappear. This is going to provide more value to the tr traditional restaurants that take care of the customers. And these are uh, moments of uh, pleasure and experience. But uh, Usually of 10, I have a two of pleasure and eight of just uh, being fed. And this uh, is uh, changing and this is something that we need to be aware of. Why? Because restaurants are part of the uh, food uh, pyramid and restaurants won't be able to cure illnesses, but they will be able to help very much uh, regarding health and nutrition because they will be a fundamental key thanks to technology to understand uh, the model we're going towards a model in which uh, gastronomy has a fundamental role and i would like to finish with a, a, an anecdote uh, that happened recently so that we understand the change my father is 80 years old and the other day we were talking and he said, my generation went to restaurants mainly to, for celebrations once or twice per year. The birthdays, maybe in, at Christmas time. My generation, born in the 70s, 80s, is the first one that uh, uh, makes a habit of going to restaurants to meet other people, to socialize. We go there and we uh, meet our partner, our friends, and so on and so forth. My children's generation, that are 8 and 13, go to restaurants to get food. When we ask, uh, what do we eat at home, my 
children say, where do we go or what do we order? A generation that has enough technology to be connected to the food in a different way, in an easy and fast and economic way. So the celebration nowadays is to cook a meal at home. And this is the change we are observing now, in which it's also very important to maintain the balance between what's online and offline. It's important to understand the balance between uh, being there or what's uh, digital. Taking into account the concept that improving the customer experience it's important, but we need to always be aware of there always being a digital side, but that the traditional uh, side of things will uh, be more valuable. Because I'm sure we will uh, use technology too much, but we should never forget that online success is a consequence of offline excellence. Digital and technological success is a consequence of the excellence of people. So welcome to a new era for restaurants. Thank you.